This is the car. It looks good from a little bit of a distance here. The guy I got it from spent $30,000. He had to pay everybody to work on it, and that includes the $2,500 he paid for the stock uh, two-door sedan with a much higher roof line when it started out. But thing is, he had a new, you know, he had the roof done. He had custom uh, glass made, um, power windows, and I noticed like the the right rear quarter when I got the car shipped up to me from Southern Cal. That thing had a piece of cardboard over it. I reached in there and hot wired it. The motor's flopping down inside there, but uh, I'll get to it later. I, you know, I don't have time for this car right now. I was gonna try to sell it, you know, and uh, I didn't get one single person ask about it. I don't know what kind of uh, wheel covers those are. I think they're off a of Fairlane of some sort. The guy I know, Terry Roberts, gave them to me. They're in pretty good shape and they they look pretty good on there, I think, for now. But uh, anyway, I'll walk around the car here. Those are stock taillights. The aluminum bezels are on the inside of the taillight panel right now. But eventually, I want to change out the back end and the front end and, and the interior as well. I won't really do too much to the side of it, I don't think. It's got some pretty cool lines, you know, from the factory. And I'm not sure if I'll extend those fins or not, but I definitely want to do something different for taillights. I want to, I want to make it look a little more 50-ish, I think. But uh, yeah, there it is, and, and I'm gonna set this camera down for a second, right on the cowl here, while I open the hood. Guess I'll have to lean it on its uh, flip out screen for a second there. Yeah, I wanted to show that uh, this guy spent, literally, I've got the receipts, he spent over $30,000 on this car. It's got a two and a half inch drop spindles, and I mean, I haven't even, I've been too lazy to even go through the receipts on it, but it sits really low, and it's gonna be a real nuisance getting it snugged into the, the backyard because it's far from flat, what I gotta do. But anyway, after all the work that this guy had done, um, this engine was chronically overheating, and he tried different radiators, he tried, uh, he had an electric fan on the front. I believe it was on the front side. Maybe, there's not much room in the back. I took the, the uh, stock or the metal fan off the water pump. Uh, when, when the car showed up after I bought it, it had the small four blade, six cylinder fan on that, on that right there. And that thing wasn't moving crap. But still, I, uh, I tested it out and it overheated. And this guy lived with the fact of, um, running it for 20 minutes and having to shut it off because it would boil over. And I know he gave up on the electric fan, but what I thought of is, uh, I actually, um, I, I had a big uh, squirrel cage, 110 volt, out of a furnace blowing air through the radiator, testing it out, mapping out the oil pressure and watching the gauge completely climb up to 220 and then start boiling over, which is what he was living with. And he, he just got totally disgusted with it. And um, thinking, I was thinking that maybe there was some crud in the block that for some reason. You never know what anybody does um, unless you verify. But I, I ran a, um, a can of Drano through that engine and really didn't get much out of it. I've rinsed it quite a bit now. The reason I did that is because back in 1979, I had a 302 and a 66 Mustang that I was my daily driver, or nightly hell ride, I should say. And um, it was running fine, and then one day, all of a sudden, it started pegging the gauge, kind of like this thing was. And um, I, uh, I got the advice from a guy that built race cars, said, it sounds like your block's plug. So I, d I ran the Drano through that Mustang engine, and this is after I tried radiators, water pump, no thermostat, new thermostat, and it was just pegging the gauge, and a bunch of crap came out of that block. Didn't happen with this one. So what I did was I went up to pull apart, and I thought, man, if I can push the heat away from this radiator to a high degree, let's give that a try. Otherwise, it's tear the engine down time. So if you look right here, that fan right there is an 11 blade electric fan uh, that came off a late 80s Mercedes. Hey, that almost rhymes. And um, I, uh, I looked all over pull apart and I got this uh, this right here. It's a steel uh, fan shroud, which is hard to find. It's off a 90 Subaru. And it had a, a triple arm uh, 
bracket that had the stock Subaru uh, fan motor in it, and I drilled the spot welds out with a spot weld drill bit. You can see there's some right there, and I, you know, I'm not trying to make a show car out of the shed, or I would have body filled those, but spot weld drill bit did a pretty good job on that. That was a separate bracket right there. But anyway, and then, so like I said, I squeezed it in there, and this fan moves some wind, but to take up the space right here, that is a three quarter inch heater hose, and I just ran it around, and then you can see, brass screws. I squeezed it in there so I centered it, you know, it was kind of kind of a tight fit and then I uh, drilled holes and, and, and every two and a half inches or so, I didn't measure them out exactly, I kind of eyeballed it, um, I, I drilled into it and uh, that way this thing's going to stay put, but that way it's pushing full efficiency of the uh, air through the radiator and guess what? It doesn't overheat anymore. And eventually, I'm going to get back up in here, and this has got an electronic thermostat set up with a knob on it to adjust it. And a friend of mine tells me I can tape this on the outside of the hose, and uh, it should be able to read the temperature of the coolant, and we'll see. Anyway, and then last little thing right here, this right here, I cut this out with a little jigsaw. All right, let's uh, let's go for a ride. I'm going to set this camera back down again because I, I don't have a film crew with me. say I was, but there's some peoples. All right. Same as the Falcon, the, the key, the ignition key goes over here. But, uh, yeah, they uh, stock gauge clustered, no horn ring, no ashtray radio. The guy was painting it pink and white, and it's gloss black, as you probably noticed under the hood. He was going to paint, I don't know what colors. He was going with this uh, 50s diner theme, but uh, here we go. Let's start this thing up. right now. Anyway, I think I'll cool it just in case he shows up.